The business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB is proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Mikes Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Designed for the driven. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today is another day. Uh, we are grateful to the Lord for bringing us this far in the course of the week. But uh, more importantly, it's time for us to also bring you some interesting and uh, very motivating story. I'm somewhere in the central region, right? I moved from my locality <laughs> to come to this very interesting place. And you should ask me why I am here. I'm here because there's a story I think you should hear. Uh, it's a story of someone uh, who well, dedicated her life to saving people, right? Uh, going into the field of medicine and the like, uh, you know. She's a, she's a doctor. She's a big woman. But uh, being, I mean, doing all of that to save humanity and to save a lot of people appears not to be satisfying her enough. Now she says she's a farmer. Ah, why? Okay, uh, I have more for you after this break. My name is Kobna Chenja in Ibuati, and this is 21 Minutes with KKB, the business edition. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life stay ahead and stay connected with mtn business broadband superior internet solutions that drive your dreams sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or whatsapp 0244 308 111 So like I said, uh, we are right here in the central region. This is the Gomua East District. And uh, we've visited uh, a, a farm with over, uh, is it over 200 acres. I think mm -hmm. it's over 220 acres or so. Mm -hmm. If you look at my feet, you, you'd realize uh, the battle is not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've been through a, a few things, you know. But yeah, uh, it's a story, like I said, I, I think it's very inspiring. And it's something that will help motivate a lot of younger folk. That's why today we are throwing the spotlight on this very amazing woman. Um, I'll tell you who she is in a bit, but as you do know, um, the business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB is probably brought to you uh, by MTN Business. MTN Business is your partner for growth. And what MTN Business keeps saying is that you, if you're a young company, if you're a young CEO, a micro, small scale, medium scale enterprise, and you are looking to get to the next level, all you have to do is to ensure that you are signed on to their uh, MTN SME Plus package. If you do not, then you're wasting money. Once you sign on to that package, every Monday, for instance, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you are at liberty to call any MTN number for free. Absolutely free. Ompe we ope day. So, all you have to do is to dial star 5060 hash today and sign up to that very interesting package put up by MTN Business. Um, uh, like I said, dial star, five, star 5060 has to sign up today or better still, you can also WhatsApp or call the number 0244 for more information and stay connected everywhere you go. show is also brought to you in partnership with First National Bank Ghana. Uh, First National Bank is the bank of the changeables. And listen, as I keep saying, if you're a young business, you need a bank to support you uh, along the line. You need a backbone. First National Bank is saying to you today that they are the bank of the changeables. They are willing to support you in this journey. What do you have to do? Just make the switch today. And once you switch to First National Bank, you enjoy three months fee free banking. You don't pay a peso for the banking services. Enjoy it, all of that. And uh, First National Bank is saying that they're going to help you get to that very destination. Uh, the impossible just got bigger and better with First National Bank, which is the bank of the changeables. If you make the change today, you will reap the benefits soon enough. Visit any of their branches in Accra, Kumasi, or Takradi, or call the number 0242 435050, 0242 
435050 and we will send one of our friendly business bankers to uh, you to start the switch process. First, National Bank. Now, how can we help you? We also have support from MG Moto Ghana. So if you are coming to a place like uh, where I've come to in the central region, uh, you know, if you don't have a very good car, sometimes it can be a problem. And so MG Moto Ghana, they are telling you that every day is Black Friday. Get the best quality yet affordable cars in Ghana today at MG Moto Ghana, of course. Uh, there's also a lot of support coming from the Makers Electronics. And in this festive period, what do you have to do? Just walk into any of our branches and grab anything you want at a hugely discounted price for you and your family. Any electronic gadget you want, just go in there, up to 85% discount. That's what they are giving you this festive season. So visit any of their branches scattered all over the country today. Now, to the big woman and the big reason why we are here. Let me introduce her to you. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Maureen Akwe. That's her name. Uh, there's a very interesting story behind her success thus far. But who am I <laughs> to tell you so much more about the, the person when she's actually here? So let's hear from her. Doc, <laughs> many thanks for agreeing to do this. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Good actually. to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, uh, okay. Let's start by just getting to know a bit more about you. Who is, who is Dr. Akwe? And you're a medical doctor and you're now doubling in farming? Yes. Okay, you let's start with the, the doctor bit. Um, what's your background? How did you even start? And, you know, uh, how come in a few years you decided, I mean, in a bit of your profile, you decided to leave the country and try a few things? I mean, take us through all of that before we even delve into uh, your desire to come into farming. Okay. So um, I'm a physician anesthesiologist. I okay. actually went to medical school in Ghana, okay. SMS to be precise. I did a bit of um, anesthesia in Ghana before I left for the okay. U.S. I went through training there and uh, became an obstetric anesthesiologist. That means I did four years of residency to become an anesthesiologist and I specialized as I go into the PhD level okay. or okay. the master's. It's in between okay. oh, that's to nice. do obstetric anesthesia. That is anesthesia just for pregnant women. Obstetric anesthesia. anesthesia right. I see. But I practice as a generalist, meaning I can do both. Mm. Um, and I did that for probably about 18 years. About 10 years ago, I made a decision to come back to Ghana and invest. Mm. And I figured that I would like to do something other than medicine. Growing yeah. up, what did you want to do? Actually, I didn't have any real focus when I was younger. But my father, my late father, Professor Benakwe, guided me. Because okay. I remember I knew I was good in the sciences, so I figured it's easy to be a dentist, so I'll just go into dental school. My father steered me away from there. Why? He didn't want you to be a dentist? He just made mm. a comment that he knows I, I like going. I keep on going. I'll get bored if I'm a dentist. I don't know why he said that. I don't oh, know. Okay. Mm. But then he steered me into the medical school. And then... Um, after I graduated, I did my internship in Ghana and then moved to the U.S. Right. Yeah. How was the journey? A lot of people I speak to sometimes, they say that transition from a Ghanaian setup to uh, a different setup outside the country is a bit challenging. Is that really the case? Did you also have to go through any such challenges? Well, we are talking about almost like 25 years plus ago when wow. I left. Right. <clears throat> At that time, clinical medicine was very strong in Ghana. So actually, mm. Ghanaian physicians who went out, Ghanaian trained doctors who went out, usually were sort of cream of the crop in most residency programs because okay. we had already had our clinical background. Right. So what we needed to complement it was the technology. Right. And that was easy to, I mean, I used to, before I went, I used to read about CT scans. We didn't have CT scans everywhere. This was 25 years ago, yeah. by the way. And then you get there and it's everywhere. Now, because we had our clinical skills with us, it, it made it easy for us, yeah. I see. So, you've gone to the States, you're practicing, you're doing so well, I believe, uh, making so much money, I believe, and then you decide to come back to the poor Ghana. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's the dream of a lot of young folk to just leave the shores of the country, particularly in times like this when they say times are hard and the like, they feel their prospects are better of elsewhere. But for you, you rather thought, no, you want to come back. Why? Because actually the prospects are better here. Really? With the right guidance right. and the right resources or 
right mentors. There's a lot of, I think Africa is the richest continent, that goes without doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, practicing medicine for 20 plus years in intensive situations, because in anesthesia, uh, a lot of uh, the things that we do are intensive. And I, I worked in a lot of trauma centers and stuff like that. I just wanted to do something totally different out of medicine, and I did have a passion for farming. Okay. My sister had a mango farm just a few miles from here, and okay. she called me out of the blue one day and asked me, well, the people who sold the land to me are selling a large piece of land. Are you interested? And I said, yes. I love farming, but I didn't really know what I was getting into. Mm. But I, I just had a passion for it. So, And as I came and secured the land and we started, it got sort of addictive. It, mm. it, was, it got exciting. Along the way, I've met, there are giants in, in, uh, in this industry yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. And I've been fortunate to uh, cross paths with some of them. And um, they've guided me and taught me to where I am now. Okay. Yeah. Key takeaway from what it is Dr. Um, Akwe is saying is that the prospects are even better in Ghana, provided uh, you make the right associations mm -hmm. and find the right mentors and the like. So for those of you who are so keen on leaving the country, uh, the grass is greener where you water it, not necessarily on the other side. Right. Okay, so it's good. So now, now we've come to Ghana. You've bought up this very huge piece of land and uh, you want to farm. To begin with, what are the crops you are into and why the preference for those crops? My main aim was to do a tree crop because of the long-term prospects. If you have a mango tree, you have a tree for 30 years. Yeah. And um, I was trying to stay away from micromanaging stuff. Um, and then I went into coconut because it's also a non-traditional tree crop and I wanted an alternative. Mm. Uh, both have very high export prospects and um, it's a good business. The other thing that I really focused on when I started was creating jobs in the locality okay. where I was going to farm. I don't come from this region but I figured that if I'm coming here to buy this amount of land the people in the community should benefit. And we've been able to create jobs, not only here, mm. but back in Accra, because not only did I do farming, I've gone into processing as well. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll come to the bit about processing in, in, in a short while, but uh, let's take a look at uh, what people usually say about farming. They say it's difficult and it's very cost intensive if you really want to make it in farming. Is that the case? What has been your experience? In a way, it's true. Um, because sometimes I, I mean, I have financed my business with my earnings in the U.S. Yeah. And sometimes there are some things that I have to finance and I wonder if somebody is here living in Ghana and they have to go to the same, they hard they are going to do it. Um, but um, it's like preventive medicine. Right. If you do it right, then you don't have complications. In preventive medicine, if you eat well, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you exercise and everything. Your longevity is prolonged mm -hmm. and um, the risk of cancer is reduced. The risk of um, developmental diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure, they are all reduced. If you don't do that, if you live a haphazard lifestyle, e eating junk food, no exercise, getting obese and all that stuff, then you have an increased risk of all the yeah. comorbidities. The same thing, when you're um, starting a farm, you have to make sure you take care of fungus, using fungicides, mm -hmm. insects, you weed the farm, you farm sanitation, all that stuff. It's a gradual process, but you have to persevere doing that. Because the, in the long run, what you are looking for is your yield. Mm -hmm. And if you put half and half in, and then in the end your fruits come and the fruits are diseased and everything, that is a big loss yeah. anyway. So, so you're better off going full hog into it. Yes, you're better off going into it. But I, I think one of the most important things for me in the history of my family is meeting mentors who have really guided me. Right. I've worked with agronomists who are excellent. Mm. And uh, there are giants, like I said, giants in this industry, farmers who have guided me. Mm. And uh, I'm always ready to learn. Right. I, I mean, I, had, I knew nothing when I came into mm. farming. So if you humble yourself, mm -hmm. they will teach you. Mm. They've been there, they've done it. Yeah. They've gone through all the mistakes. Why do you want to go through that? Exactly. Just talk to them and follow their advice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
some will say getting those connections is not easy. Maybe because you're a big woman, you're able to, you know, connect with these persons. But for a young person who has started maybe some small five acres here or ten acres there, how are they likely to meet such persons? I don't think it's really connection. Mm. Um, there are several fora around. Right. All they have to do is to Google. There are so many associations. There are programs for the youth mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I have a story out to my own daughter mm -hmm. in the U.S. who has gone into a field. And I remember I asked her how she got that job because it was quite an unusual job. And she said that she listened to a lady at... Um, um, uh, uh, um, I, th I don't know whether it was a, a program, a motivational speaker or something. She Googled the lady and got in touch with the lady. Okay. And started talking to her mm. and asking for advice. She, she knew the lady from nowhere. Mm. And the lady guided her to where she is now. Right. And that's what I think uh, people shouldn't shy away mm. from. There's a lot of people out there who are willing to help, willing to impart knowledge, willing to teach. Mm. But, you know, they sh people shouldn't just assume that, oh, I'm nobody, so I can't yeah. go. We are looking for young people mm -hmm. to empower. Mm. You know, a young person going into farming is a very good thing because you have your whole life to go through yeah. the long-term yeah. things, not middle age like I am. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Evelyn Maureen Akwe, uh, she's a doctor, medical doctor, not the, the ones a few people have been... <laughs> spending some money on research. But yeah, she's a medical doctor. Uh, but you said something that you, you funded this project mainly with your savings from the U.S. Is that to suggest you are still, are still practicing? Yes. I, when I'm in the U.S., I practice as a physician anesthesiologist. Okay. Yeah, I work in a level one trauma center. Wow. Level and, one? Yeah, trauma center. Oh. And when I come to Ghana, I'm a farmer. Yeah, so I still actively practice. But my plan is within about a year and a half or two, because my mangoes have started fruiting. Mm. I have approximately almost 7,000 trees wow. on the orchard, 100 acre. And um, I've already exported some, but I think the volume is going to go up in about mm. a year and a half. I'll come down to concentrate on the farming because of the coconut program that I've um, been um, registered in. You I know. see. Okay, interesting. Um, we'll delve a bit more into this in, in a bit, but I'm trying to imagine how you are managing your time because <laughs> I can imagine it's very stressful out there. And if you come in here, people would think you should be resting. <laughs> and you come here and you're trekking with us. <laughs> the first person who always says that is my mother. And you're right. <laughs> it's a matter of managing your time. Mm. Yes, I'm very busy. If you are going to do two full-time jobs, you should know that you're probably going to get three or four hour night sleeps only. Um, the first thing I did no, follow the advice, don't follow the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that. Um, the first thing I did, right. you know, you have to sacrifice somewhere. Okay. I went freelance. Okay. I'm a private contractor. Mm. I, I, I didn't, I stopped signing permanent contracts. Okay. So that I could take off to Ghana anytime I wanted to. Okay. And a lot of people don't like that because there's insecurity about what mm -hmm. if I get back and I don't have a job. Yeah. By God's grace, every time I get back, I have contracts lined up for me. But yes, you have to manage your time very well. Mm. And the one thing that has really helped me is technology. A lot of technology. Right. You can't, I always tell people, you can't fold your arms and sit somewhere and say, you're the owner of a farm. Mm. You have to be involved in daily activities. Yeah. So thank God for WhatsApp. We have WhatsApp platforms. All my farm workers have smartphones mm. and they're all engaged. We have different reporting system. Right. We use, um, spreadsheets, a lot of technology, mm. cameras and all that stuff as well. I see. Mm. Dr. Evelyn Maureen Akwe, uh, she's the CEO of Benjima Farms uh, right here in the central region. Um, we, we have to call for a break now, but before that she gave me this drink and uh, I'll, I'll try it uh, while we are on the break. So uh, stay with us in a short while we'll return. When we return, we'll delve into that issue of uh, how do we call it uh, processing of agri produce. You are still watching the business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. We'll be right back. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable, 
Mississippi comes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. Kajo, I wish you well on your new job and please, be be fine. Grandpa. My grandson, I learned you are leaving your father's hacienda to go and increase your standard of living to an astronomical quotient. Just go quack bra. I believe that you are trying to bless him. This is my pneumatological abrasion from the abinkunabolis to the eschatological divinity. I bought you this from the Makers Electronics Company Limited. Take it. Go forth and conquer. My son, when you receive your first salary, your next line of action, make sure so make it to me call the Makex Electronics Company Limited. Ube won the Makex Electronics Company Limited. Our Thai for Highway. Ube say wom. Ewa Amasa Manzongo Junction. Asha Manso Omo Vaco Flats. Kumasi. Ah hini ma koko bay. The Makex ema up to sixty seven percent discount. Fred the Makex Electronics Company Limited. Sisi ya zero five five two 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 two. 253 and a 055 The can once the Makers Electronics Company Limited. The Makers Electronics Company Limited. Large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. From weekend warrior to workhorse, when you get behind the wheel of the new MGZS. The luxurious sedan experience meets the rugged frontier spirit of the SUV. Indulgently generous interiors, hill start assist system for unwanted uphill traffic, and the touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay for easy mobile phone. Designed for the driven. Mm. Sorry, they kept counting me down, but I kept enjoying the drink. <laughs> You're still watching the business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kovna Chen Chen Like I said today, we're in the central region. We are sitting with the CEO of Benima Farms. She's a medical doctor and a farmer. So two full-time jobs. And she's been sharing with us how she's been managing that. Of course, it cannot be easy. Three to four hours of steep. For those of you who steep like a... <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, the point is something has got to give. You must sacrifice something to gain something. And uh, even though some would say that I think, well, she's in a comfortable situation to even sleep for 12 hours a day and still not be hungry. Uh, she's cutting off most of her sleep and putting it into investments which are benefiting you and I, the younger folk, today. So, um, thank you on behalf of everybody you've employed and you continue to employ. <laughs> thank you, too. Okay. So, we are back, but I just tasted your product. That's Juice Up, right? Right. Fantastic. Thank what you. What was that? That was a... What, what, this what? is pineapple with beetroot. Pineapple with beetroot. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me more about this and the processing that you've started doing. Okay, so the products that um, my, my farming produce mm -hmm. is what I'm feeding into. After we've sold some to HPW, we've exported whatever we need to export. We feed the rest into our processing factory, which is located in North Legon in Accra. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I brought from medicine into my farming is the idea of healthy living mm -hmm. and healthy eating, pretty much. Um, this is natural, pure natural juice. Mm. There's no additives, no water, no color, nothing. Mm. We just juice, pasteurize, and store. So you won't find it in stores because okay. there's a cold chain that should not be broken. We have three bases. We have the pineapple-based juices. We have the mango-based juices. Mm. And the latest is the butternut-based juices. None of them have any additives or anything with it. We have condiments like ginger, beetroot, lemon. Every condiment that we've chosen to accompany these bases has a health benefit. Okay. So we just didn't pick anything. Mm. We, we look at the health benefits before. 
We have 17 varieties. 17? We have 17 varieties. Wow. And one of the varieties is a mixture of all the pineapple products. Mm. The six, so the, that is one. So the 16 left, we are FDA certified for all the products. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. But for a product as good as this, like I said, I've just tasted and it's really, really good. Why wouldn't you get it into the normal store so that anybody can just walk in and just grab one? Like they grab all kinds of things uh, out there. At the moment, we haven't come up with an assure, like a method or something to assure us that the cold chain will be broken. It's very important. So a lot of people say they sell fresh juice, but it really, they have something in it to mm. prolong it. It has oh, to be okay. frozen. Okay. So we have to figure out a way to preserve the cold chain process before we can let it out. Most uh, cold stores have coolers, not freezers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've looked into that. So far, we um, market to hotels, some rest stops, and then we have an individual clientele, mm. a specific group of people who know about us, yeah. and we deliver directly to them. So if, if people watching now want such products, because I'm very impressed with the fact that you, you're focused on healthy living, and so a lot of the things we drink, we know, it's fizzy drinks here and there and all of that. They mm -hmm. don't really help us much. So something like this, let's say someone is watching and really wants it. So five days, yeah, I can finish say, 10 cartons in five days. So I would want it. How do they get to you? Um, we usually, it's very interesting, we, ha we have a, this we marketing thing on WhatsApp. We have flyers, we have a number that you can either call or WhatsApp to. And we have an order team that specifies your order, gets back to you and then delivers to you at your time. Mm -hmm and place of choice. I think yeah. you should put out the number because there may be people watching who may want to. <laughs> okay, want to so the number it. is, Right. let me pull it out for you right okay. now. I see some, uh, there's, there are two numbers mm -hmm. on this though. There's one 0557959251 yes. and 0545280958. Yes. So those two numbers, anybody right. who wants some of these can. Juice up. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's an email also, bengimafarms at gmail.com and uh, you can feel free to uh, get them. This, they say, is best before uh, sometime in 2022, so don't worry. I'm enjoying on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I saw also that you are, you are doing a, a coconut farm as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that come about? Why focus on coconut in addition to all the other things you're doing? So you're doing mango, you're doing pineapple, you're doing a few things. Why focus on coconut as well? Because I see it's also a very huge thing you're doing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually we did start coconut um, in 2017. Mm. The idea, because I had a 118 acre farm, so coconut in itself is a whole new industry. And the coconut tree, every part of the coconut tree is useful for something. Mm. Mm. And it has a, a high export potential as well. True. So the idea was to build a whole new industry by surrounding my 118 acre farm with coconut. Mm. So that would be a whole different business. Right. Uh, so we started with five acres and then unfortunately, and then we went to 15 acres and then unfortunately a bushfire swept through. Oh. And so I was um, just talking to, again, like I said, that's why we should talk to our, um, our mentors and everything. I was mm. just talking to one of the senior farmers mm -hmm. and said, I lost my coconut and um, I'm going to have to buy more seed. And he said, wait, there's a program coming up that is going to help revitalize the coconut industry. So wait and see whether you can be part of it and I'm registered as uh, part of the Coconut Federation of Ghana, okay. a member. Okay. So then they put me in the program mm. and that's how come I, uh, GEPA helped me to start and now we that's have had the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. Right. Okay, so this is from the Coconut Revitalization Program. Right. Oh, awesome. Yes. Awesome. Oh, then that's some good intervention by government. Very, very good intervention. Mm. That's really saved me big time because they gave me seedlings enough to cover 100 acres. I have 200 more acres. Mm. My aim is to have at least a 300 acre coconut farm because it's a huge industry. Right. It will bring a lot of jobs to this area. Mm. Like I said, the coconut tree, you can use the, from the uh, leaves, from brooms, you can use the pulp, you can use coconut oil. When you go into Costco, which is one of the major wholesale shops in the US, we have rows and rows of coconut products. And wow. I look at it from Brazil, from other, we can do it. Uh, one of the things that really leads to success is maintenance of the aim. Yeah. If you start something and you lose focus and you go to one side mm -hmm. or the other, mm -hmm. you have to maintain the aim True. if you want to win a battle True. or win a war mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So the same zeal with which they have empowered us by giving us these coconut seedlings to start, I think it is a better investment for them to stay with us, mm -hmm. monitor us, 
help us with inputs, find grants, direct grants towards people who cannot afford the mechanization okay. and some for commercial, big commercial yeah, yeah, farms. Yeah. Because um, apart from my regular employees, we've given a lot, since this coconut started, a lot of people have been employed here. Mm. The planting team, the pegging team, this, this is all employment. Yeah. So if you focus on that and keep on monitoring us and they will work the work with us, you see what I mean? Mm. Then you set us up for success. That's true. But if you come and give the seedlings and you go away mm. and we don't hear anything again, then, it, then, become then yeah, it becomes a challenge and a lot of people will fail. Mm. And I think everybody deserves to succeed. The fact that they've even gone, like, let me do this, you know. And actually, it changes the economy of the whole local area. That's true. Yeah, it does. Okay. I'm still enjoying the drink, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, when COVID hit and it was mm -hmm. at its peak, there were a lot of people who were coming up with all kinds of things. Oh, drink a bit of this, you know, go with this or mm. do that or all kinds of things. Um, can't you come up with a concoction of sort or a mixture which we can enjoy and also uh, use in protecting ourselves? from There's Omicron all over the place. all over. Yeah. So now, um, yeah. is it possible? Do you have anything like that? Yes, actually, it's mm -hmm. very interesting because when COVID started, okay. I developed a variety of our drink mm. that was purposely to improve your immunity. That was the pineapple with the neem products. I have pineapple with neem, mango with neem, okay. neem ginger. And uh, we um, went back to the lab, went back to the drawing board, developed the formula. We took it to the Mampong Herbal Institute and they monitored it, tested it, found it was okay. We took it to FDA. Like I said, all our products are FDA approved yeah. now. So that's how come we developed the pineapple with neem, uh, mango with neem and neem ginger products. Okay. And neem is Generally, uh, fungicide uh, is also bacteriostatic. Wow. So that's why a lot of people use neem for a lot of things mm. because it kills fungus, mm. it kills bacteria. Mm. So generally, it has medicinal wow. um, properties. It also improves, boosts your immunity. Mm. In fact, every, like I said, every one of our products has a health benefit, mm. including beetroot, which is a natural aphrodisiac. And uh, beetroot ah, is something that this beetroot hey, and, and butternut. There's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. butternut is actually something we are now introducing to the Ghana public. Okay. Um, people in Ghana, like us, like me, mm. it's very difficult to change their taste. That's true. Butternut is very common and sort of an elitist vegetable cum fruit mm. in Europe mm. and, uh, and the USA. We plant butternut here and export it to Europe. Mm. But people are not familiar with it yeah. and we've developed it we've gone back to the lab for the second time to try adjust the taste it's meant for people who have diabetes okay. because the glycemic index for that fruit is low mm. so other uh, whereas you have other carbohydrates your sugar goes up with butternut it doesn't happen so it's okay. good for diabetics okay. who want a healthy natural food drink wow. we call it a fruit table because it's a crossover between a fruit and a vegetable, and a vegetable. so we are still pushing it we, we believe that I mean, I, uh, my aim is to have my juice on every breakfast table in, in, in the, every Ghanaian home and West Africa. Mm. Because it's, instead of taking your vitamin every day, all you have to take is a drink Just a, a day, drink. and that's it. Interesting. Ah, I, I, before I sign off, let me drink one more. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm drinking, um, one word you'd have for the teeming youth who may be watching you now, and we'll tie that in with the future of Benjamin Farms. You've sold us a vision of making sure you are processing and providing some of the best products uh, health-wise uh, for families across the continent even. Beyond that, what more are we to see from Benjamin Farms? And again, you tie that in with the advice to the youth while I sip on this. <laughs> <laughs> so my advice to the youth is, I mean, don't take shortcuts, work hard. It's important to be loyal. It's important to be faithful in whatever you do. Because as you feel you might be working for somebody, even if you are not somebody starting your job on your own, mm. if you are working for somebody, your faithfulness in doing that thing is what is going to translate in your experience and in somebody's faithfulness to you down the line. Yeah. So although a lot of people look at it like, oh, I'm working for this. If you, my, most of my workers here, we, we, I treat them as family. Yeah. You know, because if you say, oh, this is my boss, so I don't care, it's for her, it's for her. It changes the picture. Yeah. So um, just be faithful, be loyal, and do your best. Mm. Because as you are doing that, you are even training yourself, mm. you know what I mean, to be a better person. Right. 
but the, I, I see that there's a lot of shortcuts. There's some people who feel if I don't do this shortcut, it's not going to work. No, hard work does pay. Mm. Plus the grace of God, but hard work pays. Yeah. So that's the advice I'd give to them. Don't give up. And they should be brazen enough to go and find things. Don't mm. just... People need to research things for themselves. Right. You know what I mean? Don't just listen to hearsay and then walk out. Mm. You need to ask for yourself. Mm. The people who make a difference are those who keep on going and asking. Yeah. yeah. And the, more, the most important thing, I think, is to humble yourself and learn from others. That's what I've done. Um, I always say I, have, I knew nothing about farming when I came in. And I've had teachers all along the way. And I'm still learning mm. from farmers, from processors, agriculturists. And um, that's the advice I'll give them. <laughs> Doc, many thanks for your time today. And uh, uh, Dr. Evelyn Maureen uh, Akwe is the chief executive officer for Benima Farms and I, her story has motivated me to do a lot more. Um, she says shortcuts, they never give you the intended results, right? So um, hard work pays, she says, smart work pays. The grace of God, pray to God, once you have it, you go far. And we'll call it a wrap though. Uh, so that I can finish with this and any other thing I have here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my name is Kobna Chenche in Boateng. It's been another edition of the uh, of 21 Minutes with KKB. Of course, it's the business edition of the show. The show was probably brought to you uh, in partnership with MTN Business, your partner for growth, as well as First National Bank Ghana, Bank of the Changeables, uh, with support from the Makers Electronics, as well as MG Moto Ghana. I'll see you soon again, hopefully, with another guest you're expecting. Business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB was proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Designed for the driven, 